What the fuck is up, my motherfucking people? It's June the fucking 4th. Yeah. And today is the first day of Reese versus the world. Obviously, I'm Reese. <laughs> Reese the fucking goat. Yeah, that's me. I'm the host with the most. Um, there's nobody else here because I'm the host. This is my first episode. So, yeah, this is my baby. Um, Reese the fucking world. It's my perspective and my take on everything. The world that we live in, the politics of it, the people we live in, the shoes, the clothes, the fashion, the wigs, the gosh, the gowns, the children, the mothers, the fathers, the brothers, the sisters, the aunts, the exes, the currents, the sneaky links, everybody, nobody's safe, nobody's off limits, including your mama and your daddy, that nigga that you won't stop texting that bitch that you stole forty five dollars from on that girl's trip out her purse, yeah, and nobody's off limits. Yeah, that grandma house that you won't go to because you uh, wouldn't farted on her bathroom floor. Ain't nobody off limits. Okay, today's first episode is gonna be a story time, right? <clears throat> Now, yeah, I know everybody's used to like, you know, story times. When I say stories, I don't want to underwhelm you. And I also don't want to, um, how do I say, you know, sound like everybody else. So it's not generic when I say story times. Like, these stories just happen to happen. My life is just weird as fuck. So things just happen to happen. And this story time is circling around. Maybe something that could be sounding pretty criminal as fuck. Um, probably pretty illegal. So we're going to bleep some of those names out to keep it cute. But um, in this story time, it's going to get deep. Hold on, let me get something to drink because oof, Jesus fuck. Mm. Yeah, tequila. Ooh, I can't show y'all the brand yet. They're not sitting in a sponsorship. For my listeners at home, for my listeners all over the airways in South Carolina, Columbia, to Myrtle Beach, to motherfucking Charlotte, North Carolina, to motherfucking Rock Hill. All y'all motherfuckers listening, I know y'all got y'all drink. It's good motherfucking Friday. So, this story time starts with me. I'm 19 years old. This is my first time ever in... A fucking hostile situation. Like, when I say hostile, I mean hostile. I mean fucking hostile. Like, I don't think they're getting... Listen. Hostile, like, bitch, you better move or I'll beat your ass. Bitch, you better move or I'll beat your motherfucking ass. That's a hostile I'm talking about. It was a hostile situation. So, boom, I'm 19, yeah, I look about the same, right? Beautiful, gorgeous, handsome fella, right, 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 I know, right? I'm about to go get my hair cut, you know, and I'm posting on my snap, like, yeah, look at me, get at me, get at me, and bloopity, 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 bloop, somebody slides up, not surprising that somebody that is just They got nice clothes. <laughs> they can dress. They got nice jackets, but yeah, you know. So it's like they they slide up and say, "Oh, how's your day going?" And I'm like, "Oh, it's going pretty fine." Oh, what are you doing today? Mm, nothing. Want to get a haircut? Mm, how much do your haircuts usually cost? Pause. Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. I feel like you should only ask questions to things you want the answer to. So if you ask me how so much how much something costs, uh, you should be doing what? What should they be doing, Jalen? They should be paying right, right. If you're not throwing the back end, you shouldn't be asking how I'm doing the front end. Mind the motherfucking business that's paying you, because I'm gonna mind the business that's paying me. And you asking me how much something costs is doing what? It's paying me. Yeah. So he's like, how much? Does this haircut cost? I'm like, mm, 
It's it's thirty five dollars because I like to tip my barber because I go to an excellent barber in Columbia. Shout out to Regal Lounge in Columbia, South Carolina. Shout out to Javon Maynard. That's my barber. Yeah, the man got me right. Of course, of course. We'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. But yeah, I mean, so I'm like it's thirty five dollars. I'm like yeah, let's see what this is. Let's see what this goes. See what this goes. So the person says, "Oh, I got that. What's your cash app?" And you know me, I'm I'm slick, crazy. So I'm like, hmm, it sounds like they're gonna pay for it. So you know your cash app is de- technically connected to your phone number. Shout out to Cash App too. Cash App trying to bless me, trying to bless a young nigga out here in these streets. God, I I, I know you are a wonderful guy. You move mountains for other people, but I see what you're doing in other people's life. I need you to tell Cash App to do what they do in other people's life for me. Mm-hmm. I would look real good with some of that money. I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying, I would look real good. So back to the fucking story. Like, okay, anyway, so back to the story. The guy's just like, "Oh yeah, I got that. I'll send you the cash up." So he 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 gets my number. I send he sends the cash up. He sends forty dollars, <sighs> and I, I I just jumped up and, and I jumped around. I looked around in the circle. I'm like, "Oh my god, he sent me." Come on, I got in the fucking car and I got my haircut. Wow, forty dollars. So, of course, my conscience. Yeah, I talk a good game. My conscience said, you know, you just gonna take that nigga forty dollars and not gonna say nothing to him. And I, 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 I sat on it for a second. I said, you know what? I should just get that haircut. Mind my business. I didn't do that. You know, I said, hey. I wouldn't mind meeting you, you know, to say thank you. And he offered to have a a, a drink. He offered me a beer. Now, I don't drink beer. I'm not a a beer drinker. I'm not into those type of things. I like the spirits. You know, I like the spirits. I like my I like my tequilas. You know, I like my wines. You know, I like my whites, you know, well, hmm. we'll touch that subject when we touch that subject. I like my drinks a little uh how you say white well we'll touch that subject in another pickle so i'm like yeah yeah yeah. so i'm uh, i get the haircut he lives like five minutes away from getting the haircut at, like downtown columbia is really nice so something in the buttermilk just was not clean lord jesus Woo! something in that motherfucking buttermilk <laughs> it told me just it just was not clean Hold on, y'all, because this is cool. And, sir, if you're out here and you're listening and you're here what I'm talking about and you know it's you, listen, you should be ashamed of your fucking self, okay? Because I was 19, you weirdo. Anyway, um, so, <laughs> so I get to the man's house. He has a nice townhouse, like, right off, like, Gervais Street. It's a nice little townhouse, like, right by the state house. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the area. Um, it's birds, everything chirping, real suburbia, you know. And this guy comes outside, and he has this pretty little dog. And he fucking greets me. He's like, "Hey, hey, hey, come on in. You look handsome as fuck, you know. You're really handsome." And I'm like, <laughs> "Thank you." All right. So I come in. I and this is the problem. You should when you go in, anybody, ladies, fellas, niggas, bitches, hoes, sneaking and geeking in this futures, look on the motherfucking wall. Look on the walls when you go into people's house because a person that has a family will have their family up on the walls, okay? And also look at the bathrooms for two toothbrushes. That's how you know they have another person there. That's your context clues. That should tell you whether you want to lay down in this room with this person or not if they have another toothbrush in there. <laughs> so I didn't look around on the walls, and we just walked to the kitchen, and he already had, like, uh, um, some beers, and he was just about to crack them. There's some red apple ales. I actually do like um, I'm not going to say too much on them because they're not sponsoring me either. So with some red apple L's and, and he, he tells me, hey, you know, I got some guys coming to fix my um, my cabinets. Um, so I'm going to keep looking out for them. I was like, oh, OK. So we're looking out the front window of the just get the seating. You know, we're just looking out the front window of the house and, you know, he's talking. He's, you know, giving me these like shallow ass compliments, you know, like older black dude trying to flirt type compliments like, man. You know you real fly, you know what I mean? You a fly, you know, just real fucking weird. Like, I'm just like, all right, bro. 
Um, so yeah, so about five minutes goes by and he looks out the wind window and like a car just comes barging up to the driveway. Like they live there. Like, you know how you drive in your driveway when you live there. You drive pretty fucking comfortable. So the car drives pretty comfortable and his whole demeanor just like it instantly, instantly goes night and day. Like he just goes like a bad kid who's like his mom's coming home. Like, oh shit, nigga, I told you to take that chicken out an hour ago. When I beat your ass, no, I'm beating your ass. Like, that's how the fuck he was looking like. Somebody was coming to whoop that. Are you calling my lips shut? Okay, let's not be shady. Whew. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Nigga, go, go, go back in his bag. Get the fucking Carmax in the background, y'all. I don't know if y'all can see it. This nigga just went and got in Carmax. I'm like, let's not be shady. Ooh. Yeah. So so he, he, he just looks all crazy at the person in the car. And I, I see the person in the car get out of the car and... I don't know. Like I said, something in the buttermilk just wasn't clean. You know, it, it, a big burly feller, African American feller, gets out of the car and he just looks pissed. And this is not nobody to fix no cabinets. Uh uh. He looked like he was ready to be a bitch up. And I was never going to be that bitch. It was never going to be me. Do you see me? It was never going to be me. <laughs> It was never like it was never gonna be me. So I'm like, wait, what? And he he turns to me. He said, Oh, you you gotta go. You 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 gotta go. You gotta go. To. And I'm like, What do you mean I gotta go? I thought they were fixing the cabinets. And it, and it dawned on me, nobody's fixing the cabinets. The cabinets is fixing to get the fuck broke because whoever's about to come in this door is about to bust the fuck up. So I'm like, wait, hold the fuck up. And I start looking and I see the picture of the two of them in the frame. This is when it dawns on me. I have now walked into somebody's home who lives there with somebody else. And now the somebody else is now here. She just got real. So boom, he opens the door. I, I, I mean, I couldn't even say anything. He opens the door. The best I could do was look in the kitchen and look for some kind of weapon because the at the stature this man was and i had just got my hair cut i was just in no place to be fighting you know i was in no place to be in a combat situation so i, I looked around the kitchen i'm so sorry for something to take him the fuck out i couldn't afford to lose the fight financially physically you know i could not afford to lose that fight so, so yeah, I, I couldn't. So, I most definitely look for a knife, a fucking mallet, something to stump or claw this nigga in the eye before he could hit me. And the man came in and said, what the fuck is going on up here? And I mean, on the back end, he gave Santana, but when he started, he gave that Rick Ross bark. He got a, huh, like, what the fuck is going on up here? Like, it was real twangy on the end, so I'm like... I, I said, excuse me, sir. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, sir. I was invited here by him. He paid for my haircut. I knew nothing about this, sir, at all. I didn't even know nothing about this at all. And he immediately goes, oh, yeah, he likes to do this shit a lot. So it dawns on me, oh, so, bitch, you like to bring niggas in here a lot and pray for haircuts a lot. And this is this man's house? <laughs> Fucking baffling. Yeah. So, so yeah, he's he, he's just like, yeah. He, he brings people in here a lot. And and the guy is just like, he's like a video game character. He's bouncing. Like, this big bitch is, I mean, this this man is fucking bouncing. Like, he is ready to fucking, and his shoes are leaning to the side. And that's how you know he got a nasty fight stance. Like, when your fucking shoes is munched up in them, you know, oh, excuse that. When your shoes are like munched up on your fucking foot, he was ready to go. He was ready to beat somebody fucking ass, right? So he goes and he says, I, I best suggest that you leave. And I was like, oh, oh, see, I'm leaving. As soon as I turn my back to go, boom, bang, bada, boom, boom. He is towed down this nigga. What Masago go? What, what did Masago say? That's his name, Masago. Yeah, he go, ta-da. That's how he did his ass up in that motherfucking kitchen. I mean, he beat his ass, y'all. He said, wow, wow, wow. I mean, he knocked that bitch up under the cabinets. That bitch seen the Listerine from last year. 
He seen the fucking lights off from last Christmas. He knocked that nigga, slammed the fuck out in that kitchen. I mean, cabinets, glass. He said, get your bitch ass out my house and take your fucking dog. And oh my God, it was so loud. I went out the kitchen door like you could hear it from the door. And I'm like, this man is killing this man in here. I mean, he's fucking him up. Like he full, the last thing I saw was him full on punch him. So boom, like, I mean, he full on punched him and he just went fucking flying. So I get in my car and I back out and then I back down the street because, you know, oh, fuck, no, he's not. His big ass is not going to follow me out. I, I figured he was going to turn into a big dog, bitch, and, and just run up after the car and grab the car or some shit. Like, this nigga is beating his ass and he's going to beat my ass if I don't get the fuck up out of there. White people on the street are looking. They're looking. They're like, oh, my God, what is going on in that house? Three black men went in. Two are fighting. One is leaving. What is going on? Oh, my goodness. And one of the black men is not cisgendered. He's a very gay man. So, I mean, they're, they're looking. They're like, what the fuck is going on? I'm looking like, yeah, what the fuck is going on? Because I don't know. I was a construction worker. I had nothing to do. I had nothing to do with it. I don't even know what you're talking about. So, I back out. I drive. And I get the fuck out of there. I get to the light. And I thank my lucky stars because what if that bitch would have got me? You would have never seen this. So, yeah, that is the first fucking crazy story of a hostile environment. Hello, and welcome to today's first episode of Black Air Force News, where we bring you the news in the black community from the black perspective. You better hold your ass. So get your two pieces of fried chicken and some motherfucking coleslaw. Psych, that was a trick question. Whatever bitch in the back said, ooh, let me get the coleslaw. Bitch, you cancel, okay? What the fuck is you grabbing coleslaw for? On what world would you be grabbing coleslaw? Where is coleslaw pulled at? <laughs> okay, this is the first shit we're going to cover on this motherfucking Black News Air Force. I will pull out the Black and Miles, but we can't smoke right here on this segment. But usually I tell this Black News with my Black and Miles. So we're going to talk about what's going on, what's really going on. Raise your hand if you want to send your kids to school right now. Nobody fucking wants to, okay? Every fucking day you see on the news, some Caucasian or looks like Caucasian grabs their gun, goes into their school, yada, 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 gets walked out by the police. How come? How many kids died in this last school shooting in um, Texas? What, what, 13 kids? Huh? 19 little niggas. God damn. 19 little ain't. Woo! 19 children died at the hands of one man while the police sat outside and strategized a plan to not come into the fucking building. I just made up a word. I know I did. I know, right? They just came up with a plan to come to not come into the building and allow him to shoot these kids. They say, you know what? Here it is, team. We got this one guy in here. We got a couple kids. What are we going to do? I'm scared. You're scared, Phil. Phil, I'm scared. Bob, I'm scared, too. We're all scared. We're not going in there. What about the fucking kids? Where's your pride to be American in? When they do those no-knock warrants, anybody know what a no-knock warrant is? A no-knock warrant means that the police will raid a house with an unknown amount of people looking for one or two people. No-knock. And they're never sure that they have the correct address at any time of the night to surprise the person and to grab them. So you mean to tell me the police have better odds going into a drug dealer's house and grabbing one person out of a house of eight in a fucking crackhead in the, a crack house in the trenches than a school where there's one man that is the obvious shooter, one target. If you believe that, you also believe that KFC is the best fried chicken chain. And and I also believe that you are not a good human. You know, if you're out here repping KFC, there's a problem at home. That house on fire. You don't know it yet. You don't know it, boo. You don't know it yet, but that house on fire, you in. Because what the fuck? But that's off the story. It seems like every time we have these little events or these shootings, there's something that's always oddly familiar. CJ, you know what's familiar? What is familiar about this? The shooter seems to be a young white male. 
Oh, not a young white male. Oh, my goodness. Really, you don't say. Hmm. I wonder how a young white male gets their hands on an AR-15 or an AK-40 fucking 7. Well, me, I bought it from the goddamn gun auction because it's my motherfucking silver booty and I got the right to bear my arm. I got the right to bear my guns. I got the right, the right, the right, the right, the right. Yeah. Okay, you see what that right gets you? Oh, our thoughts and prayers, which I'm making you some ambrosia salad. It was poor babies. It was angels. And that's all Texas is doing right now. I promise you, if you go to Texas right now, there's a bunch of big fat bitches named Kathy walking around with pies and cakes talking about oh, my thoughts and prayers to reach <laughs> Jesus Christ, those babies. <laughs> and they're not going to put them guns up. They ain't gonna tell them about that they son Jebediah that out in the back. Yeah, see Jebediah like to get them chickens. He like to ring them by the neck. Mm -hmm. He like to fuck them up by the neck, right? And they won't tell you about Jebediah. They won't tell you about that. They won't tell you Jebediah like to take a gun to school because little Mary says she don't want to go to prom with him and he gonna shoot her up too. They don't want to tell you about that, but they'll send their thoughts and prayers. Try that shit in the black neighborhood. You pull a gun in a black school, nine times out of ten, a nigga might pull a gun back. A little nigga might pull a gun back. You pull a gun on them kids in Columbia. Well, motherfuckers gonna pop your shit back. Pop your shit, twin. There we go. Um, But, yeah, that's the problem. And, oh, you know, it seems to never happen all the time in other countries. Hmm, I wonder how many mass shootings they had in Canada. How many mass shootings they had in Japan. How many mass shootings they had in Russia. <gasps> What are the numbers of mass shootings in Russia? You don't fucking say. Fucking zero. Hmm. Putin don't play that shit. Pull that gun if you want to. That's your ass. You pull a gun out of public. Vladimir Putin is popping that ass like it's motherfucking Christmas. Is what 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 Gucci man say? It's 2016. He on his motherfucking kitten. Putin's gonna pop that motherfucker. Stop playing. Russia's not gonna play with y'all. And see, America, we 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 let too much shit slide. That's the fucking problem. You know, America likes to let a lot of shit slide. All that letting shit slide. And look how all these damn school shootings is pounding up. The nigga shot up a grocery store of black people. This fuck nigga got in the store with a body cam on thing. He playing fucking uh Goddamn call a damn duty Call to shoot the niggas This nigga was purposely doubling back on niggas He almost shot a fucking white man And said oh, my bad Sorry Connor I almost got you there Nigga Nigga what <laughs> But guess what Guess what they getting served Our thoughts and prayers are with you And the loved ones and the families that were lost And the victims Our thoughts and prayers are with the victims if I had for all the thoughts and prayers that help me. Bitch, I don't give a fuck about a thought or motherfucking prayer. You godless people. You fucking animals. What the fuck is a thought and a prayer from a godless person? The hell, y'all would rather send a thought and a prayer than ban a gun. What the fuck they think these kids got? In they book bags or some shit? What the fuck? Nobody wants to say, hey, maybe we don't need the fucking gun. What, what, what fucking deer? CJ, do you hunt? No. no. You hunt, Jalen? Ah. Oh. Well, you know, I'm not too unfamiliar with hunting. I was a Boy Scout in my former life. I was a lot of different things. But we'll, we'll discover that. We'll cross that bridge when we cross that bridge. But I was a Boy Scout. It doesn't take an AR-15 to shoot any large animal in North America. It doesn't take an assault rifle. It also doesn't take um, a machine, a, 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 a automatic gun. But what it does take is people with common sense. So it's seeming like a lot of people that don't have common sense is getting these guns. The same way y'all don't want to see New York drill rappers with Dracos and tools 
And you know, you don't want to see Fabio Foreign with the guns in the video. I don't want to see Billy Bob and Susan and and Kathy Ann and Jenny Ma and all these motherfuckers with they goddamn twin pistol. It's a little video of a little girl with a twin pistol. She fucking it up. This bitch going glocky, glocky, glocky. 11 years old. This bitch supposed to be playing with Barbies and fucking bassinets. What the fuck is this bitch doing? By the time this bitch going to get a little 13, she going to be at the Bass Pro Shop flirting with the boys, sitting backwards on the chair. You know what I mean? Sitting backwards in the chair. Yeah, 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 yeah. With her legs wet spread. Mm -hmm. You know what that mean? Wet spread. Wide spread. On the back of a chair. What little, what little boosie say? What little boosie say? Two red bones kissing in the back seat. Mm. Next case, we ain't gonna do too much on that. But anyway, you get my point. The school shootings is the problem. And I have a solution to offer. All you clear fucking individuals from the ages of a uh, 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 nine, because mm, I'd rather not say too much personal reasons, but I know from the age of nine to the, about the age of fucking 21, you niggas need to be not with gun. Ban them from getting a fucking gun. They better make some shit to shoot the school up with. They better do that because they might can build a bomb. You know, these niggas around here, they ain't that fucking smart. You know, white kids can build a bomb. They be good in that chemistry shit. They take that shit for fun. You know, you got to be a different breed to take chemistry for fun. Niggas struggle and lose their family and their life behind chemistry. And you, mm, I almost said the word. Mm. You Caucasian people. You Caucasian people take it for fun. Y'all know what y'all can do with that one. Stick it right up, y'all motherfucking turkey basters. Anywho. Every second, every minute, man, I swear that she can get it. Say if you a bad bitch, put your hands up high. Hands up high. Hands up high, tell them dim the lights down right now. Put me in the mood. I'm talking about dark room perfume. Go, go. I recognize your fragrance. Hold up, you ain't never gotta say shit. Uh, and I know you taste this a little bit. Mm, high maintenance. Uh, everybody else basic. You live life on an everyday basis with poetic justice. Poetic justice. I told you that a flower bloom in the dark room, what you trusted? I mean, I write poems in these songs, dedicated to you when You're in the mood for empathy, it's blood in my pen Better yet with your friends and him I really wanna know you all, I really wanna show you off Fuck that, hold up, plenty of champagne Cold nights when you cursed his name You called up your girlfriends and your girl in that little bitty range I heard that she wanna go and party she wanna go and party, nigga don't approach her with that Atari Nigga that ain't good game, homie, sorry They say conversation, rule a nation I can tell, but I could never write my wrongs Lest I write it down for real P.S. 